In this video, we're going to create a table component using a library called React Data Table. We're going to allow you to display data like so, as well as paginate the results. So let's get right into it. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to look at building out a uh, table component here in uh, React. Uh, in order to do that, we're going to use this library called React Data Table here. Um, but a lot of these table libraries are pretty similar. So hopefully some of this will transfer over to uh, whatever component uh, library you decide to go with. Uh, so a couple requirements here, you need React 16.8. We're just going to use Create React App. And also for the styling for this, they use style components. So we're going to add that as well, although not necessarily uh, needed if you wanted to style this yourself, I believe. So let's uh, get right into this over here. So we're going to move on over to just a terminal right here. And I'm going to CD first into my uh, desktop here. All right, so let's just get a basic uh, React app up and running right here. So we'll just say MPX here and we'll say create uh, React app. And then we'll just go at the latest to get the latest version here. And then finally, we got to name it. So we'll just say data table like this. All right, so that looks like it finished up nicely. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do, let's just take a look at the docs real quick again. All right, so then we gotta add a couple packages right here. So uh, we're gonna add the styles components along with the React data table component right here. So uh, we can use yarn, npm, whatever you're using. We'll use yarn right here. We'll copy that over and we'll come back over here and just paste that in and that should add that for us. All right, so that's working well. Let's uh, CD into this. So we'll CD, well actually we're already in here so we can just open this up in uh, VS Code. All right, so we have this working in VS Code right now. We got our source folder here and we got our app.js which is where we'll kind of do all our work I think basically and then our package.json. Uh, if we come, we can see we got style components and we have the React data table library. So make sure you got those two things and then we're good to go. All right, so like I said, we're gonna do uh, basically all our work here in this app.js here. So we can close this down and just finish up working from here like this. So we can get rid of this uh, stuff right now. We don't need that CSS. We don't need any of that. We can come down and we can get rid of, uh... all right, so we'll get rid of all that. All right, then we can come inside here um actually let's come up to the top here because we got to bring in our uh, actual libraries that we're going to use so we're going to say import uh, data table uh, and that is from uh, react data table component just like that and then we're going to come down below that and we'll say uh what else we're going to need i guess use state and we'll say use state and also use effect and that's just from uh, React. All right, so we're not using those yet, but we will. Uh, and then we're gonna come down and let's start by adding a little bit of state. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna come down below here and let's say const data. And again, this is just our use state syntax here. And we're gonna say set data like that. And then we will say that is equal to use state and then set that just to uh, an empty array to start. So let's have a loading state. So we'll say const loading and we'll say uh, set loading. And that's gonna be equal to the same thing, use state. And we'll set this to false to start. Okay, and then finally, we're gonna have a per page. So because this is gonna be a paginated uh, table component, we are gonna to wanna to have a how many rows we're gonna show per page. So let's go const like this, and we'll say per page, and then we'll say set per page, just like this, and we'll set that to use state. And we're gonna set this initially to 10. So we'll be able to change that if we want later. All right, so let's actually talk about where we're gonna get this data from, because we haven't shown that yet. Uh, so if we come over here, uh, this JSON placeholder site is great for just some fake data, uh, and you can actually make um, post requests and stuff too, and do some different stuff. Uh, but we're just gonna make a get to get some data. 
So if we come down, we're just going to look here at uh, users. And then, so these are what we're going to be getting. So we'll, we'll, we'll set this up first without um, any sort of pagination and then we'll add pagination after. So we're going to hit this uh, endpoint right here. So we'll copy that over and it'll return these things and we'll just display, let's say we'll display the name, the username, uh, the email. Those will probably be good enough for us uh, for now. Uh, we can do any of these different things. We got the phone, we got different stuff going on here, but um, we'll just start with those three. All right, so let's add kind of the shape of the data that we wanna do here. So we're gonna come down and below here, so we'll say const uh, columns like that, and then we'll say that is gonna be equal, and we're gonna do uh, an array here of objects. So if we're gonna have a few different things. What do we say? Uh, one of them we said name, and that is going to be, we'll just say name like this. And then we're gonna come down below this and you gotta give it a selector here. And you're gonna pass in the row here and that's gonna be row.name for us. So that's gonna be equal to that. And then uh, that's gonna be one of our columns and then we can do that a couple more times. So let's uh, copy this down two more times. And then for our second one, we're gonna say uh, username, username and that is going to say user name like that and then our selector here instead of name we're going to say username all lowercase like this and then finally uh, our last one we'll just say the email like that email this property here is just what's going to be displayed um so if that is what that's going to be and then this is going to say email as well so that is going to be the shape of our data now we're gonna pass this into the actual data table component when we end up adding that in a sec. So that is looking pretty good. Uh, you can also add a bunch of different stuff here. Um, so if we come over to like conditional styles here, so you can actually come over and add this uh, style stuff to the actual uh, column um, array of objects that we have there. And this is conditionally, you can change stuff up like that. So if you want to take a look at that, we're not going to really get into any of that right now. But uh, these docs are actually really good and uh, pretty thorough with a lot of examples and stuff. So if you uh, are interested in extending this functionality at all, uh, take a look at some of that. Okay, enough of that. Let's get back to some code in here. Come in here. All right, so let's use that actual uh, data table component and uh, see if we can get something up on the screen right here. So let's say a uh, data table like this. And then we're just gonna pass in a bunch of stuff so we can self-close that like that and then come in here. And inside here, uh, there's a bunch of different properties you can add. Uh, we won't do everything possible, but you check out the, uh, the docs for this. But we'll start with the title. You can add a title up here and we'll just say data for now. And then we're gonna come down and we're gonna pass in the actual columns um, that we created above just a second ago. So that will say columns just like that. And then we're gonna pass in the actual data here then there can be kind of a progress pending so we'll say progress pending and this will show the sort of a loading state if it, the data is not fetched yet uh, we're gonna have pagination that we're gonna add in a second but we won't do that yet so we'll leave that out for now um and other than that i think that's all we need for uh right now so let's go ahead and save that and we'll come back later and uh switch it up so let's get a uh, server running right now and just see if we can get anything. There'll be no data yet, obviously, but uh, we can see if we can get something going here. So we'll open up a terminal right here. And in order to get things started, we can just say yarn start. All right, so you can see because we got no data, we're just getting our title, which is uh, just data right now. And that's gonna say there's no records to display. So that is uh, working good. Let's uh, go back. So let's get into fetching our uh, data that we're gonna put into this table. So we're gonna come up uh, right above our return statement here. Let's give ourselves a little room like that. And we're gonna say, um, we're gonna create a function here to fetch our data. So let's go async, and we'll say function. And we're just gonna say fetch, fetch table data. 
and then we're just gonna pass in uh, we'll do the page after actually so we'll come back for that and we're gonna come in here and uh, right before fetching we're gonna set our loading state so set loading and we're gonna set that to uh, true then we can come down below that and we're gonna go const and we're gonna create a URL like this so let's just say URL and that is gonna be equal to uh, to the uh, what we created before so we can just come in like this and that's going to be equal to the json placeholder uh, url so let's come in and just paste that in uh that's what we copied down before um so that's looking good and then we're going to come down below that and we're going to say and we'll go const response so we'll get the response like this and that will be equal to await and then we're going to use the fetch syntax here so we'll just say fetch and then we'll pass in our url like that all right, and then we'll come down below here and we'll say const and we'll just say users because that's the data that we're getting and we'll say is that's going to be equal to await and we'll say response dot json then finally we can set our data so we can say uh, set data and we can set that data to the users like this all right and then finally once that's all done we're going to come in and set the loading to uh, false like that all right, so this is our function right now, and this is gonna handle fetching all our data. Now we wanna come up, we're just gonna go above this, and we actually want to uh, fetch this because we're not actually calling this anywhere. So we're gonna use that use effect that we brought in earlier. And then inside here, we're just gonna call that fetch table data like this. And then we're gonna pass in here um, just an empty array because we just wanna run this once on load. If you can pass in uh, any other side effects here, so this will run anytime uh, something else changes. So if we had a different uh, use state, um, say page or something, it would run anytime the page um, state changes. So that is what that does. So we're gonna say fetch table data and then we'll make sure we call it like that. All right, so now we should be getting some data in our table, let's uh, check that out. All right, so we got a beautiful looking table right here, right off the bat. We got all our names. We have, um, we should actually have some labels here. So we must have labeled those wrong. So I realized what we did here. This is the, what we want to call the name. So these should all be name here. So this should be name and this should be name. That's just a label. That's actually just a label. So these are all name. Make sure you switch that up for your columns. Okay, and then if we come back here, we can see now we got these um, as our table uh, column headers here. So we got our headers, we got our data coming in. That is all looking really good. Very simple. Again, you can go ahead and style this any way you like. Uh, right off the bat, it's not that terrible. But basically we could have created this just with some TRs and uh, TDs and whatnot uh, ourselves. So now let's look at pagination, which would have been a little bit harder to do on our own. So let's get into that. All right, so now that we've seen how to display the data, let's uh, add some pagination to this. Uh, for this, I think this endpoint only returns 10 users, so we're gonna have to switch up the actual endpoint. Uh, but if we come back over to here, we can uh, check out this one. We can get the to-dos here, and this is gonna return uh, a bunch of to-dos. So we'll just copy that over. Then we can come back here. We're going to paste this in and get the to do's here instead. And now we have to come up and we got to change this to match. So this name, uh, what we'll do, we'll go uh, user ID, ID like this. And then the selector is going to be row dot user uh, ID like that. That'll be our first one. Then the second one, we'll just go, what is it? Title. And we'll go row dot title like that. And finally, this last one, we'll say completed. And that's going to be a Boolean kind of thing, true or false right there. And we'll just say uh, row dot completed. All right. And then if we come back and we can check this out, we can see that now we just got this user ID. We got the title and completed. Uh, completed is showing nothing. So let's come back and fix that. So because this is just sending us a uh, Boolean, we're gonna do a little ternary here. So we'll say, if the row is completed, we'll just return yes as a string. Cause this needs to take a string here and otherwise we'll just say no. So that should be good. Uh, and now if we check that out, you can see here that it is either yes or no, it's completed. So that is now good. Okay, so now we just wanna add pagination, which is pretty simple here if we're not paginating on the server. So 
we can come down to our uh, data table like this. And all we need to do is add pagination. And now you can see here we have our paginated table. You can see we can switch between our various pages, go back and go to the end. So that looks pretty good. So thanks for watching and uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next one.